Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Dean Padayag streaming from our headquarters here in Pretoria, South Africa. Beloved, wherever you are in the world, we would like to welcome you to our fellowship with the Word of God and with each other today. Thank you for being with us. With the continued rise of the COVID-19 infection in South Africa, we decided to suspend our church gatherings for now until there is a significant decrease of the infection in this country. For the past four days, the infection rate had been so terribly high. On Wednesday, there were 17,493 new cases. On Thursday, there were 16,000 78 new cases. On Friday, there were 18,762 new cases. And yesterday, there were 17,958 new cases. And it seems like it continues to soar higher and higher every day as the third wave continues to peak. Now, in as much as we enjoy teaching and preaching at our churches and our outreaches, in as much as we enjoy seeing our members congregating and fellowshipping together at our local churches, seeing them fearful and scared is also very concerning. And seeing them uh, infected is obviously the last thing we want to hear. Not to mention South Africa might be going to another hard lockdown anytime uh, soon. We are just waiting for the president's announcement about that um, tonight. So we will continue our worship. We will have our uh, fellowship online for now. And this morning we already had our uh, devotion with Pastor Randy Cora. We had our songs and now our message via Facebook Live and later through our YouTube uh, channel. Again, thank you all for being with us. People who are near and far, you are very much welcome to our message today. Our message today is entitled, Does Jesus Care? As the people continue to suffer the devastation caused by this worldwide pandemic as sickness, complications, and death become so prevalent all over the world, as businesses and even churches closing down for good, as jobs and economy continue to crumble down, as uncertainties, doubts continue to multiply, the question, does Jesus care, becomes louder and louder. In 1901, Frank E. Griff, a minister in the Methodist uh, Church, asked the same question, Does Jesus care? In the song he wrote, he says, Does Jesus care when my heart is pained too deeply for mirth or song? I'm not going to read everything because of our time, but I just want to uh, read his uh, questions. Does Jesus care? When my way is dark with a nameless dread and fear, as the daylight fades into deep night shades, does he care enough to be near? Does Jesus care when I'm, I have tried and failed to resist some temptation strong? Does Jesus care when I said goodbye? to the dearest on earth to me, and my sad, uh, my sad heart aches till it nearly breaks. Is it owed to him? Does he see? Now these questions are very common. During these days, almost everyone is asking this question, does Jesus care? But this writer to all of these questions, he answered, Oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary 
and the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. Here's the man who went through so much troubles also in his life, and yet he is fully convinced that God indeed cares so much. Also, the disciples of Jesus Christ, when they were tossed up and down with the waves amidst the dark storm, they asked the same question in Mark chapter 4, verse 38. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? It is a valid question of those who were scared, those who were going through something like these disciples in the midst of the storm. We ask that valid question. Do you not care that we are perishing? Yet in verse 39, here is the response of the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 39, uh, we see Christ uh, responding. The Bible says, Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. The Lord cares so much. The Lord cares. That is his response. He proclaimed peace. But even God doesn't act right away or respond immediately to our prayers and our asking. God still cares so much. Just like many of us, the Apostle Paul experienced many hardships and trials and tribulations in his life. We can see that, that account in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 11 verses 23. 3 through 28, the Bible says, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. This is Apostle Paul talking. And then he is now about to uh, give all his experiences in the ministry. And then he says, I am more in labors more abundant in stripes of admixture in prisons more frequently in deaths often. From the Jews five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep. Verse 26 says, In journeys often in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of of the Gentiles in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness, in toil, in sleeplessness, often in hunger and thirst, in fasting, often in cold, in nakedness, besides the other things. What comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all, the churches. Here's the Apostle Paul and his testimony of all his experiences that he encountered in his personal life as well as in the ministry. You see, some people would say, just pray, everything will be okay. Just pray, your problems will go away. And we all know that is not true. Many of us prayed so much that this pandemic will go away. Many of us prayed daily, faithfully, long prayers with tears and cryings. We pray that our problems will go away. But I tell you, sometimes even when you pray hard, even you pray faithfully and so sincerely, but even after amen, the things that you are praying about, they are still there. But even in that situation, just like Apostle Paul, he experienced God's caring love and grace. God cares so much, beloved. In the same book that he wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, Apostle Paul testified, he says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, 
who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. You see, God cares. Even though we are going through so much in our lives, He is there to guide us, to give us wisdom, to comfort us, to give His grace that is more than sufficient for all our needs. God demonstrates and manifests His cares in so many different ways. Even in passages that Seemingly, God doesn't care. We see God cares. For example, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Very uh, famous passage in chapter 12 of 2 Corinthians, verses 7 down to verse 10. The Bible says, Unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And then in verse 10, Apostle Paul says, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, in, uh, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Now, it seems like God doesn't care. Apostle Paul prayed so much. He prayed three times that this thorn in the flesh will be taken away from him. Yet there is no yes answer. Now, Apostle Paul here has a problem. Many people believe it is a physical problem, maybe a health issue. But there is no answer that is a positive as Paul wanted it to experience. No, nothing uh, that is acted upon in taking the thorn in the flesh. But from these passages, God demonstrated and manifested His care. And we will learn this as we continue. Number one, God demonstrated His care by giving Paul a continued access to him through prayer. Again, God demonstrated his care by giving Apostle Paul that exclusive access through prayer. In verse 8, the Bible says, Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. Paul used his Helpline, that prayer line was so open and so available, Christ did not close that down. That's a manifestation and demonstration of care. God cares enough that He keeps the prayer line open for Apostle Paul. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 challenges us to keep on praying. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You see, when we are in serious trouble, when we are in need, we have an access so exclusive, we can talk to God anywhere, anytime. That is prayer. And we can give to God all our requests, regardless of their kinds. You see, God cares so much that before He even uh, answers our prayers, He already gives us that peace that passeth all understanding. 
peace is not an answer to our prayers. So you have, you have to remember that's not the answer. God is going to answer your prayers. But before He answer our prayers, your prayers, He gives us peace as a guarantee that He hears our prayers and He cares about what we need. Now, the answer part, that is His part. We cannot answer our own prayers. He is the one that is supposed to answer our prayers. It could be yes or no. That is His answer. But God cares. Number two, God demonstrated His care through His abounding presence. The presence of the Lord itself It is a, a demonstration of His care. There is an interesting phrase in verse 9 of this passage. It says, And he said to me. That implies or indicates God's presence. Despite the physical uh, thing or the thorn in the flesh that Apostle Paul experienced, the presence of Christ is still there. And he talks to Apostle Paul. And that's because our Christ will never leave us nor forsake us. That's what he said. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5, the Bible says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. As the song says, he is the God of the mountains, but he is also the God of the valleys. He is in everywhere at the same time. He is a caring and loving God. Number three, God demonstrated his care through his provision. Verse 9 says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Christ is not referring to the saving grace here in this passage. Yes, Paul was already saved spiritually. But if God wants... God can also save Paul physically from all of these troubles that he is going through and this thorn in the flesh. God can take this away from Paul immediately. But God provided Paul not the saving grace to rescue him from this current predicament that he is facing, but God has given him sustaining grace. God has so many grace in, um, in all our needs or for all our needs. It is not always what we want that God will act upon, but according to our needs. And God's provision does not only supply the present, but also He pre-supply our future needs. Number four, God demonstrated His care through having a purpose for us and for what we are going through. Verse 9 says, Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. That's the very reason Christ did not remove the thorn in the flesh that Apostle Paul experienced because Christ is not just concerned of the present condition of Apostle Paul, not just that he uh, wanted Paul to be saved from all of these troubles, but Christ also cares about the future status of the Apostle Paul. He wanted Paul to experience the power of Christ and to become strong, not just physically, but also spiritually. In verse 10, the Bible says, Therefore, when Apostle Paul understood the very purpose and reason of Christ, uh, Christ's uh, desire for him, he says, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. Apostle Paul did not suffer 
because of his own stupidity or because of someone else, but because there is a reason and there is a purpose for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. All these things that Apostle Paul mentioned in verse 10 are present, there's no doubt, among all of us believers and unbelievers alike. That is very true. Unbelievers suffer for nothing. They suffer because they are alive. They suffer because they are living in this wicked and crooked world. Technically and spiritually speaking, they suffer without a purpose and without a reason. But they suffer nonetheless. But we as believers in Christ, the Bible says we suffer for Christ. Philippians 1, 21, uh, 29, I should say, For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in Him, but also to suffer for His sake. That is very clear that we believers, we suffer, but when we suffer, we suffer for Christ. He is the very reason of our suffering. Then we also suffer with Christ, not just for Him, but also with Him. Romans chapter 8, verse 17, the Bible says, And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together. Wow. We all know that Christ is more than enough reason for our suffering. But Romans chapter 8 verses 26 down to verse 27 tells us that the Spirit of God helps us in our suffering, in our weakness. He intercedes for us. When believers suffer, we have a helper in the person of the Holy Spirit. He is not far away. He is in us and in our weaknesses, in our sufferings, He intercedes in our behalf. But not just that. The Bible says in Romans 8 verse 17 that if we suffer with Him, we are also will be glorified with Him. And then in verse 18, the Bible says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. You see, God cares so much that our life is not just up to going through, surviving through sufferings. God cares so much that He even prepared so many rewards, glories, and crowns, and many rewards that He prepared. And He is going to reveal all of this, you know, during the rapture. And so we must be so excited not only to escape away from this wicked and crooked world and to have all our troubles and tribulations over and done, but knowing and understanding that we have so many crowns and so many rewards that God has prepared for us in heaven. That, that's just so amazing to uh, understand. Beloved, it may be so hard for us or for you to understand, but God cares for you. God cares for me. He cares not only of who we are but what we are going through nothing happens to us without his knowledge and when we are going through hardships when the world is so dark and when we cannot see his hands guiding us through understand and trust his heart for he truly cares for you father thank you for that assurance and that guarantee 
that whatever we are facing, what we are going through, regardless of these circumstances, you are loving, gracious, and caring God, and nothing can change that. You are always there because He is, you are caring. You are always there because you want to be involved in all the affairs of our lives. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen.